are about to witness a global movement. This is the Medicine Girl Podcast with renowned healing expert and registered nurse, Robin Stevens. Every week, we shine the light on new ways to heal your body from the root, ignite your inner healer, and tap into your divine wisdom. Begin to live harmoniously with your mind, body, and spirit. You are stronger than you think, braver than you realize. Now is the time to wake up and start living healthier, wealthier, and laugh out loud happier. And here we go. Hello and welcome to the Medicine Girl podcast. It is me, your host, Robin Stebbins. And today I am here with my good friend, Susanna Van Gruen from over just over the over the bridge in Crockett, but you originally come from South Africa. So my dear friend, if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself, um, I, I always like to ask people to introduce themselves maybe in, in a original way that you're not used to um, something really current that engages your heart and your soul. And then um, I've got lots, lots of questions to ask you about what's going on right now and how we can how we can mitigate all of this stress and, and excess energy. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, my name is Susanna Van Gronen, as you rightfully put it, uh, uh, put out there. Um, I am um, an emotion code and body code practitioner certified. Um, and I think the one thing that is most current for me right now is um, the ability to be able to help people um, relieve stress, help people to um, really be, speak their truth, um, but also just help people to heal through all of what is currently going on, right? We have so much stuff um, going on with having to um, wear masks and, you know, not being able to socialize with people, um, not being able to be in the same place as, as you know, more people than what we normally have. But um, I think for me, the biggest thing is just to be able to, you know, be authentic, um, just, you know, let people know where I stand um, and not really um, what, being affected by, by the emotions and the vibrations of other people. I really, for me, the biggest thing is, is to keep my vibration high to, um, you know, to try and encourage other people to do the same. Um, so I think that's for me the biggest thing. Um, one thing that is, is kind of funny, but it's, it's really en enjoyable too, is it's, um, I stepped out from a complete IT career, very analytical engineering mindset, and um, I'm now doing energy healing and um, emotional healing. Um, so it's quite a quite a shift, and I, I I just love it every minute. <laughs> that yeah, that is that's a huge change, and I think you know one of the conversations you and I have had was just about awakening. And you had mm -hmm. asked me, you know, kind of how long I've been on this path to awakening, and it's been a long it's been a long journey, probably in earnest since 2010. Um, where I just knew I had to right. peel off these layers and step into my authenticity, speak my truth. Mm -hmm. um, but you, your journey has been fairly recent. Yes, um, very much so. You know, um, I think one thing that stands out for me is I got caught in this grind, right? I caught in, I got caught into this have to work um, full time, you know, work nine to, f um, well, nine to five, but commuting back to work. And I think um, like so many of us, right, we had to make a living. We, we think, we thought that we had to have all this money. We thought that we had to, you know, have this house and especially here in California, you know, house prices are so crazy. So I think um, one of the big things for me is I, I kind of have been on a path of, of awakening, but it started more physically. You know, I think I started by you know, getting very sick and then realizing that I do not um, really trust the, the medical system and um, turn to it natural healing and, um, you know, started using essential oils um, 
for every for everything, um, literally in my kitchen, in my bathroom, and um, you know, uh, for any kind of illnesses and everything. But I think just waking up to to you know other dimensions, waking up to um, you know enlightenment, waking up to energy, um, you know, waking up to quantum physics and, and things like that. Um, that really took a while. Um, you know, I think I started very 3D. I started with going to Tony Robbins events. Um, you know, it was all about making money, about being, you know, taking action and everything. Um, and then, you know, learned about Dr. Joe Dispenza. And it was such a big shift um, just by doing that. Um, it just really opened my mind <clears throat> to, <clears throat> excuse me, to unknown <clears throat> and to possibilities. You know, it's just being... Um, open to to there is more than just daily grind there is more to than just you know saving for retirement there is more to um, you know having to pay the bills all the time and and all the stuff that we have and you know what we surround ourselves with um, and I think that was probably one of the biggest shifts for me and then um, I did do uh, I did go to Rhythmia in, in last year January and, and did plant medicine um, and even though I didn't experience or felt that I had a big experience, um, there was a big shift, um, you know, and I think that really just helped me to understand, you know, follow your heart, um, be open, you know, everything is in the unknown. And the more we strive to, to live in the unknown and in the present moment, um, the, the better our lives turn out to be. I love, so I'm just writing these things down because I, I really, I loved um, a few things that you said. One is, is, I think is most important is we have to stay open. Um, and what you just said, everything is in the unknown. But yet, I think we are so afraid to step into the unknown. Either we've been so programmed mm -hmm. from birth to do your school, you know, and I'm recently, as you know, homeschooling my son, which has been a major <laughs> source of anxiety <laughs> for me, even though I believe in it to my core, mm -hmm. it's like now all this responsibility is on me. Um, but when I stay in that place of authenticity, I'm speaking mm -hmm. my truth and I'm open, then everything starts to unfold before me. I'm in what athletes call flow state or the, right. kind of that spiritual place of flow state. And like when you talk about going to Rhythmia and experiencing plant medicines and opening, you also get to decide, you know, this seems more like um, a, a factory kind of plant medicine ceremony. There's too many people and there's too many energies that, and that's, just, that's the place of being open and authentic. It's not like we're going to get reprogrammed by yet another entity. And I think the spiritual mm -hmm. community is just as susceptible and they fall prey to that same paradigm right. that mm -hmm. we've all been under. So staying open and, and understanding that when we speak our truth, that's when I think mm -hmm. the magic happens. Yes. The trick is, what is my truth? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when we're first starting to awaken, I'm not speaking my truth. I'm speaking from other platitudes, mm -hmm. parenting, teachers, um, those that I've worked with. I'm just parroting more platitudes right? Or whatever you want to call it, just more programming. I'm reprogramming mm -hmm. the program right. and then we step out of that. You know, the matrix is a good analogy for that. We step out of the matrix and we're flying on our own. It is a lot more uncomfortable or can be because mm -hmm. this is just all now I'm creating. Right. Um, and so then, you know, getting back to what you also mentioned in this current state of affairs, and now we're going almost on a year mm -hmm. since we started to see things a little more clearly how they'd been operating for a long time. I think a lot of us have woken up to right. that. 
which can cause a lot of individual stress. It Mm -hmm. can cause a lot of individual um, insecurity, anxiety, a lot of things can, can come up. So how have you helped to either awaken those emotions or keep them at a point where you can navigate them because when anxiety is too big we shut down right so we all have to have strategies and as a practitioner I'm just really interested in how do you navigate this new world we're we're in right and uh, you know I have to admit it um, initially it was not easy Um, you know I think one of the things that really um, struck me um, as as difficult, one of the things that I really experienced as a, as a really difficult issue was, um, you know, being surrounded by people who are so programmed and people who are, um, you know, just following the mandates and ju- not asking questions and just doing it blindly right and I think um being you know having most of my my friends and my my nearest group being so so almost want to say easily fooled I mean maybe not that's maybe not the right choice but it it's kind of like believing that the government is going to save you um you know believing that um you know people who are computer um, you know, who created computers and, and things like that are now elected officials and can tell you what you have to do. Um, you know, uh, people who haven't practiced for many years or haven't been in, a, in the real world for many years, now all of a sudden is an expert on, you know, on all things. Um, and I think that was one of the most difficult things that I had to face is that I, I kind of had to, to keep my own sanity. I had to kind of kind of had to step away you know I kind of had to put up boundaries I kind of had to um, really determine whether that energy whether I need that energy in my life right Um, I I've been very blessed with not really struggling a lot with anxiety or you know with um, I've I've really always been very even killed and very um, you know, I, I'm very decisive, so I can very quickly decide, you know, what, which way I want to, which way I want to uh, go, or which choice I want to make is really the right place, right? Is if, if I, am I going to allow myself to be affected by somebody who is so programmed and so um, so easily manipulated, versus am I going to step up and say, this is it? I am not going to do this. I am not going to fall into that, into that fear state. I'm not going to allow people's opinions and people's in, uh, you know perceptions change my, you know my choice and uh, what I feel is the right thing. Um, you know, I, I stepped into a health journey um, seven seven years ago now. Um, and I really decided that I am not going to have people change my, you know, affect my immune system by forcing me to wear a mask full time, right? Um, and that was a choice that I made. Um, and, you know, everybody is on their own journey and people make their own choices. And, you know, if that works for them, that's fine. But I, I had to come to terms with everybody being on their own journey. Um, and I think one of the reasons why the you know, emotion code and body code resonated with me right away was the fact that, you know, I can really help people with some of those, those anxieties, those stressors, um, and also by helping them healing some of those, those effects of, you know, their immune systems being, um, you know, impacted or affected. Um, by able to help them, um, you know, alleviate some of those fears, um, by e- able to heal them on levels that, uh, that you know, our subconscious knows everything, right? So right. by doing, by, by be able to heal people by proxy and by, you know, 
tapping into their subconscious for that matter. I mean, and that sounds, that sounds kind of. Well, that's what I was going to say. It, it's, it's, um, it's kind of esoteric and it's out in the, in the field. So why don't we just take it and use me as an example? So I, was listening to on all I do when I drive around to see patients is I listen to podcasts Mm -hmm. and I listen to this podcast on the emotion code. And I know when I get those hits from my soul that it's in alignment. And so I knew I had to do that right Mm -hmm. away. So I went on the emotion code website and I looked at practitioners and I saw you, your picture, and I got another hit contacted you, you contacted me right back. And um, the hit that I had was that I don't want to have to dig around and sleuth through Mm -hmm. my past, through my ancestral past Mm -hmm. to try and determine what's holding me back and what isn't. Mm -hmm. I had severe lower back pain and all of the physical things I had been doing were not working doing yoga every day, stretching, breath work. Uh, My diet's phenomenal. None of that was alleviating the pain. Mm -hmm. So there was something else going on with it. And you look at, you know, um, other, other coaches that I, I collaborate with. We always look at if there's a pain in the body, look at the emotional root the back, mm-hmm. that's support. Where am I not being supported or where am I not supporting myself or supporting others? All of that came to just a finite point. And then I wanted to do the emotion code. Mm-hmm. So over to you now, what, what, is, what is the process that is happening for you and I and ex- maybe explain what proctoring is Okay. Um, and I, and I can say after working and doing the sessions, my lower back pain went away. I had severe neck pain that's gone. Um, but it moves and it moves and it's, it's like, I still have to do my work. It's not mm-hmm. like this magic bullet of, of anything, yeah. nor do I want it to be. Right. <laughs> right. Well, so the beauty of it is, is I, you know, we don't have to do it in person. Um, because it's all we all our energy and everything is pretty much energy, right? Um, for me, um, I for when I start a session um, on on Zoom or even by phone or whichever way we connect, um, you know, the first thing for me is um, to be able to test, do muscle testing, and to test whether the uh, I can be proxy for for the other for the for like for you or for another the other person, right? Um, and by do, um, of course, you know we we do a prayer. Um, I my the first order of business is is this is you know this is something that is provided by the source, and so for me it's I asking for help on you know guidance. I'm asking for help on um, intuition. I'm asking to, to be able to ask the right questions. I uh, you know I just ask for help in general, and I'm just grateful for the opportunity to you know to be able to help anybody, right? Um, and then once I um, after the prayer, the first thing I do is I connect by proxy. So I will literally do muscle test and say uh, you know let my yes be yes, let my no be no. So that way I know exactly um, what what is the message, and then I connect by proxy and I literally just say my name is Robin. My name is Robin until I positively test um, that I'm now um, Robin and I test that I'm physically that I'm connected by proxy. So everything is done with muscle testing. And then um, by connecting, connecting um, by proxy, I connect with the subconscious. So the subconscious literally is a record of everything, right? It knows everything. It understands everything. It remembers everything. So um, the first thing that I would usually do is um, I would go and say, uh, we have a conversation, obviously, and find out what are some of the main pressing issues, the physical issues, the things that we can literally um, quickly work on, um, that we can see a quick relief. Because by that, we build 
we build trust in what we're doing, but we also build a belief, right? So if you can see, wow, my, the pain is gone, or, mm -hmm. you know, if it moves or shifts, but if you can feel an immediate effect, at least you, you immediately have a better sense of resonating with this, right? Um, and then um, I will test what the severity. I will first ask, you know, the, the person, what does he feel, he or she feel, what is the severity of this issue right now? Right, so um, on, a, on a scale from like one to 10, 10 being the worst. Um, but then I will also test with the body and say, hey, what is the severity of this issue right now? And the body will, it will tell me. Um, and then I work according to that. So then I will start and ask um, with the emotion code, I'll start asking, you know, are there trapped emotions that are causing this issue? Or what is, are there trapped emotions that is causing this block? Or are, are there trapped emotions that are contributing to, you know, the lower back pain? Um, and I will work, we have this emotion code chart. I don't have it right in front of me, but um, there's this emotion code chart that um, pretty much is about 60 different emotions. And it pretty much covers all the emotions or the different versions of emotions that, that, that you know, that is identified. Um, and so I will just go down and, you know, for each one, I will find out, do I need to know more? Um, because, you know, sometimes the body is ha happy and ready. Okay, let's just get rid of all of this, right? But other times it's like, okay, we need to drill down a little bit. Okay, at what age did this occur? Um, at, you know, what, are, what was that a specific situation, a specific event? Was there, a, a, you know, another person involved? Um, where in the body is it um, located? And, you know, I will test as long as the body wants to give me that information, I will I, I'll find out. Um, at some point, it's just like, okay, you don't need to know more. And then you, we literally did release it. And we release it by um, using either a magnet or your hand, because of course we have, it, um, you know, elect um, not electricity, but we have magnetism in our hands. So I will just swipe over um, the main meridian, the governing meridian um, for, you know, X amount of times as we need to be able to release this emotion. Um, we really can drill down very deep. We can go into, you know, just regular common trapped emotions, if we want to call it that. We can go into hidden trapped emotions. We can go into shared trapped emotions. We can go into absorbed trapped emotions. We can go into inherited trapped emotions. And those, I mean, I love those. Those are, it's so amazing to be able to go back to, you know, our ancestors. And um, Dr. Bradley Nelson, who um, is, you know, he had this download about the emotion code. He literally, uh, you know, he says people who are very sensitive to, to seeing beings or spirits have told him that when he's been, he, he works on these inherited trapped emotions, you know, at his um, events or stuff like that, that they would see the, 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 pre, the, the, spirits or the the um you know the souls of these of these ancestors even on the stage and it's kind of like cheering on for it to be you know for those emotions to be released um and then also you can release it from all the the generations and from your children so you know i i usually test and say you know did my child inherit this um and then that way we can release it and and that's that's i love those guys because it's it's so it, you know it's such a sense of of value almost if you could if you're able to release something that comes you know down from so many generations that's that's it and and to not get stuck in the sleuthing and the detective work, because I think mm -hmm. we can get, and I, and I have seen personally, a lot of people doing their, their personal growth and their work, getting stuck in that, getting stuck, mm -hmm. what I call making love to their disease or making love to their diagnosis. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not meant to be held in the body. It's not to right. be, it's not meant to be used as a tool of, well, here's why I can't show up completely authentically because, um, you know, I suffered this trauma at this age and ancestral trauma happened here. So I, I'm not going to be firing on all cylinders. Right. It's, 
it's uh, and this is why I love this modality so much is that mm-hmm. it releases it whether you understand it whether you know about it whether you pinpoint it it's done in you know three or four sessions and it's mm-hmm. it's quite miraculous because I felt it being released from my body and I didn't have to necessarily believe in um the proxy mm-hmm. it it just is and and we are and i and i always like to bring things back scientifically for my patients that listen to the podcast and Mm -hmm. the physicians that i work with we are electrical energy we are we have a magnetic field our thoughts can be measured outside of our body with the rudimentary instruments that we have right now so you have to know Mm -hmm. thoughts are creating our reality and this stored emotions are stored electrical energy right and they are in the body and they are not Mm -hmm. meant to be in the body we are not taught from from the beginning how to release emotions none of that's taught Um, whether it's on purpose or not that's another discussion (laughs) but to be able to have someone take, go in and release those is nothing short for me of a miracle. Um, and I think that's where nothing against therapy. Uh, I, it's not something that I can promote because I have seen, and I used to work in uh, psychology and, and was a mental health case manager, worked with psychiatric patients. I never saw anyone get better either with the drugs that we gave them were poisonous or the therapies we had just kept people stuck or sometimes worse. Um, And I know occasionally some people get better, but can you explain to those that are skeptical how this works on that, the energetic level? Right. Okay. So the one thing that, um, you know, that what I've learned and I've seen too is, so we, we are, we, you know, we experience these emotions. Um, sometimes it's very small, right? We, somebody say something to us and, and you know, it, it sort of hits us in, in the chest, but we don't really pay attention, right? Or sometimes it's, you know, a car accident or sometimes it's being abused. And what happens is, you know, as children, we are kind of told, you know, <clears throat> children should be seen but not heard, or um, you know, these different things that we've been uh, during our education. And you know, it's like our parents don't know better, or you know, it's just something that happens, right? But our emotions are so delicate that um, the smallest thing will sometimes come. And some some of us are strong, you know, and we like it's water off a duck's back and it just goes. But for other people, it it gets stuck, right? <clears throat> it goes. Sit- and these emotions find a place where there's a weakness. So for, say, for instance, you have, um, you know, an infection in, um, you know, in, in a gland or something. Um, these emotions will find this, this spot. And it's like the size, it can be like the great apple to a grapefruit size. And it will go and find the spot and it will go and sit there. And so basically it affects your energy flow because mm-hmm. now your flow would usually just go straight down or it would go down your meridians. But now you have this energy stuck here. Um, and so now there's a protrusion, right? There's a distortion in the flow. Um, and so then also some other things that we would do is we would build walls, right? So the hard wall is one of the biggest things that, that uh, you know, we all have it. We all build these walls around us to protect ourselves. But we also, by doing that, we keep ourselves in and we protect, you know, we let, keep everybody else out. And so these hard walls are, are it, it builds like blocks in our energy field. And so now there's an imbalance, right? So now um, your body is going to try everything in its power to to circumvent it. But this, you know, emotionally we're stuck with this this thing in our in energy flow. Um, 
And so I think the biggest thing is that we also have to remember is that it's, it's like an onion, right? So every time we release emotions, sometimes it's not even related to what we are thinking, right? We're, not, we're thinking, oh, I have back pain, but we, it, it comes up with something in the mid-ear or it comes up with something in the, you know, in the um, misalignment in the vertebrae or whatever a different reason, but it's like an onion and you just peel it down, right? Um, but I think the biggest thing that we have to remember is if as soon as there's an imbalance, we, you know, we are not working as prime human beings. And um, so many of us always suppress our emotions. We never talk about it. We never express it. We never, um, you know, share that, I, you know, I, I feel really sad that you know you say that or you know it's just like that's how the how we we've grown up right and i think with this modality the the best part of it is it it peels this onion so it takes it out and it takes it out and it eventually it gets to the root of it um you know it doesn't matter what it is it it, it gets to the bottom of it i love i love that and that that brings up the the next question is for those that have lots, we all do. We all have lots of stored emotions, things that we haven't processed. And again, we weren't taught how to, to release store emotions and the why. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at a lot of the, the clients that I work with happen to be um, men between say the ages of 50 and 70. Mm -hmm. And most of them, when I first start working with them are like, I just want you to tell me what to eat and how to exercise so that I can lose weight and feel healthy. Mm -hmm. And I always have to explain that's about 10%. We have right. to connect with your heart. We have to connect with your soul. We have to release stored trauma. And they always ask me why. Why do I have to deal with that? Let's just let sleeping dogs lie. And the, the thing I hear over and over is, well, isn't that just focusing more on what's wrong and focusing more on the problem? Like, why should I, why should I even start down that course? Isn't it just going to open up a can of worms and I'm going to be one of those, you know, hippy dippy guys always talking about my feelings and it's like well if it's if that's the authentic you yes then mm -hmm. you will embrace it and it won't be a bad thing but can you address the the idea of the why we even need to go into that realm of releasing all of this stored trauma emotions unprocessed ideas thoughts I can try. <laughs> I think the, um, you know, so the, the why we release this is unless, so unless we really go down to, you know, forgiving ourselves and, you know, really forgiving any kind of um, wrongs that were done to us, um, and we are we can we can really um, mentally and emotionally do that very truthfully, right? Um, will we be able to really heal our bodies? So um, you know, I think the the one thing that I want to um, or that worked for me, put it this way, is you know I I, I always thought yeah I'm. I'm quite open hearted, you know, I, I can forgive easily. I, you know, I don't hold a grudge and stuff like that. However, subconsciously, because of those emotions still sitting in your body and, you know, that feelings still stuck in there um, until you can really release those, those traumas and those energies and there's those emotions, um, you, you, your, your body is not going to heal itself. Right, because everything um, that is uh, pretty much any disease or any imbalance or any um, illness that comes up or any pain, physical pain, um, you know, emotional pain, all of those 
are caused by energy and emotions and you know feelings because every fe- every feeling that we have has an emotion stuck you know attached to it and i think everything in, in our lives are are really energy and, and emotion based and the the reason why we need to re- um, release those and and you know get get down to the true self and the 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 pureness of being is that we can prevent any kind of disease through that. We can um, heal any kind of disease and we have to give our bodies the, the physical chance to heal by releasing all of that emotional and mental undercurrencies to it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I think too, not, not only is it the ability to heal our bodies and prevent disease, but it's also living life optimized, you know, Mm -hmm. and recently I did a podcast with Mike Sheldon around alcohol and wellness. Mm -hmm. And I, I am very healthy. I do a lot of, um, I do a lot of work on myself. Mm -hmm. However, I would have like one or two glasses of wine, you know, three or four times a week minimum. Mm -hmm. And I started to ask the question, like, what is this doing for me? And, and the answer was, it's, it's holding me back. It's numbing me. It's a lower Mm -hmm. vibration energy. Mm -hmm. And then the question became, how would I feel if I got rid of all of the lower vibration substances and people Mm -hmm. thoughts how would I feel right and that's I think what what this does as well is it allows you to experience this vessel in an optimized state yes and so that you're giving it's like you're you're clearing out everything Mm-hmm. Not just the toxins that we're eating, but it's the toxins of the past that have accumulated mm-hmm. in your psyche, whether you agree to them or not. Sometimes we mm-hmm. come in with them and th- you can right. look at the study of epigenetics. It's science. Yes. So it's cleaning out your being. I call it a purification. The yes. The wellness program that I I do with people is called a purification. We're purifying everything that goes in, everything that comes out, everything that's surrounding your energy field Mm -hmm. to to experience life on that that optimized pathway. Right. And, you know, that is actually um, super interesting um, that you just mentioned that um, because that's where the body code comes in, you know, um, because the body code is is based on the emotion code and it's based on the release of of emotions and and, and toxin uh, and, you know, and um, trapped everything that's sort of stuck in our bodies. But the body code can really focus much more in depth on, you know, pathogens you know like stuff like and and then you can even break it further down into either just the energy was left and the physical pathogen has already been eliminated or you have both and and you we can literally have the subconscious instruct the subconscious and you know to to instruct the body to heal those or to release those right and we can work on misalignment so even if you can't get to a chiropractor at any point right or something like that and you feel like you know something we can really even um, realign those or correct those misalignments by using the magnets over the meridian Um, we can look at nutrition and lifestyle you know we can look at you know does do my body get enough water um you know does it absorb the nutrients um what you know it 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 can really go very very deep i mean it can tell you if there's anything um you, you need you need more sleep or you know there's a specific herb or spice that you have a shortage of this you can really um, go down so deep in it um it can even i help you identify toxins um you know um heavy metal toxins um excess like 
you know, addictions, alcohol, stuff like that, it can go into EMFs, right? Electromagnetic, which is so prevalent, right? You know, now um, it can tell you about the food toxins. And because your subconscious is so in tune and it's so, you know, it knows everything, it can literally help you identify what you have too much of, what you need, and, you know, you can go into that. Um, it can go into like offensive energies, right? It can go into trauma energies and um, post-traumatic stresses. Um, it mm -hmm. can get you into despair anchors, you know, things that that are your body is holding on, like the seeking heart energies or, you know, no will to energies. There's so many different things. And it can literally go into your system and, you know, identify whether there's an imbalance in an organ or whether there's an imbalance in, you know, in uh, um, different glands or in your energy body for that matter. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it, with, with, that's why I, one of the other reasons why I love this modality so much is that you can really go so deep um, into all kinds of different, um, different fields. You know, if I can show the body code basically has these six, um, six areas of focus. Um, and under each one of that, you can drive, in, you can really go in so much deeper. Um, and so, you know, that comes back also to the why, you know, like there's a lot of times, um, you know, we have these diseases and we, we have symptoms um, and then we, we, we get diagnosed with something, right? We label it, we have to put a name to it. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, the, so much, so many times is you, you cannot label something um, that might have 50 different underlying problems, right? Um, mm, and, that's and, it. And, right, and you can't throw a pull at it if you don't deal with the cause, you know? It's the whole thing about that's the cause. Well, yeah. The, right. And that's that, that beautiful cycle that the uh, drug companies put us in beautiful for them because they give us a label mm -hmm. that then we buy into that mm -hmm. they didn't have all of these diagnoses until they had a drug. First, they get the drug, mm -hmm. then they create the diagnosis, ADHD. So mm -hmm. then we get, you know, Ritalin was created. Oh, oh, here's what it can work for. And all these kids that can't sit still for six hours, we get a label on ADHD instead of normal children that right. not be able to sit still for six hours mm -hmm. um, and then give them these drugs. And then they get mm -hmm. side effects. So then we have customers for life. Right. When we step out of that paradigm and we look at, I'm not going to, and Keith Mitchell, I will always give him a shout out. <laughs> he said when he was, he was an NFL linebacker paralyzed on the field and the doctor came in and said he would never walk again. And this is what I want to impress on every single person. Anyone that comes in and tells you who you are, this is what I want you to say. Who are you to diagnose me with anything? I will not give you that power. We mm -hmm. have that power and we don't have to know exactly the root. This is why I love this so much because, you know, if we get into Freud and therapy and all these different modalities, you're looking at literally infinite data points in your mm -hmm. life. You will not find the root that way. Mm -hmm. That is impossible. The route this way is I have lower back pain. I go to you and three sessions later, it's released because we're releasing all of it. Mm -hmm. We're releasing all of the, the stored trauma. Not to say that I just go to you and, and you do all this stuff for me. I'm still stepping in my truth. I'm mm -hmm. still eating right. I'm still doing my yoga. I'm still doing my breath work because those feel in alignment with myself optimized. Mm -hmm. right. So um, in conclusion, since we're getting towards the end of the, the time, mm -hmm. what can you tell people? Um, I'll, I'll give them everyone links on where to find you, but what can you give those that are in a place of suffering or in deep in, in an illness or diagnosis, some, some simple things that they could do right now to help start that shift? Well, I think that the, 
the biggest thing that I can really offer anybody, and that's the one thing that I offer myself, is, is just always ask yourself the question, is this really the way that I want to you know, pr proceed? Is this really the way that I want to see myself? Um, you know, I think one of the things that we have to ask is, is this the legacy I want to leave, right? Do I want, what do I want to have on my tombstone one day? Um, you know, did I, but do I want to say that I lived in fear and I, I never um, really enjoyed everything in life and that I live with regrets? Or do I want to say, I did it all full speed, full time, right here, right now. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing that we have to ask ourselves is if we get stuck in this, in this um, paradigm of, of, you know, symptoms and, and diseases, I think the one question is we ask, you know, there must be something else. There must be something better out there. Um, and why not try? You know, why yes. not? Why not just try something different? Why, why not, you know, live, look into the unknown? You know, why not look into possibilities? I think the biggest thing is that, you know, there, there's so much out there for us. There's so much, possi many possibilities. Um, why not, why not go for it? You know, <laughs> yes, be beautifully said, why not go for it? And, and kind of what you spoke about in the beginning is that when we stay open, mm -hmm. the, the, the magic is in the unknown. Yes. So the known is putting your head down and going to work, going to the gym, coming home. Well, now we can't go to the gym, listening to what the authority figures are telling you to do. That's not living. And is no. that what you want to say on your deathbed? Yeah, I did everything I was told and I was miserable, right. but, right. but I, I was a good boy. I was a good girl. I, I told the line. Or do you want to say, I did everything I could. I lived my life optimized. I right. surfed on that web, that edge, that precipice of creation, not knowing where I was going, but just knowing mm -hmm. like my heart is leading me, my soul is leading me. And, and that's what I'm going to follow. Right. Yeah. The one thing that I can add to it is, you know, what turn off the TV, um, turn off the hero worshiping, turn off the, the you know, the movies, um, turn off the programming, right? Because that's what it is. It's television programming. Yes. It's, it's movie programming, right? Um, I think the biggest thing is get outside, you know what, enjoy nature. Mother Gaia is amazing. And you know what, just Im imagine our bodies is an amazing, every one of us, it's an amazing miracle. Our bodies can heal ourselves, can heal itself from the inside out. It's what we, what we put in, the fuel that we put in, the food that we put in is what can heal us. Um, it is, we are a miracle. Mm -hmm. And the more like this, scrolling through this, he, like you said, I love that hero worshiping. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying this, like, there is no God above you. You are God manifesting mm -hmm. in these amazing, incredible ways. Stop the hero worshiping. Stop trying to convince your friends to hero worship. Let's all step into our truth, our mm -hmm. magnificence. And, and again, when, when we say, and it's, I think it's kind of ironic now, let's go, like you get out into nature. Like we have to tell each other to get out into nature. We are nature. We are nature manifesting. We are the earth peopling. And, and that is so lost right now, mm -hmm. especially with all these distractions and these electronics, but a hundred percent, the more we can, can realize that you know, with all this censorship and all this silliness that's going on, that's a choice. We're going on these, these computer programs to be censored, right? Get outside, talk to one another, connect with one another, connect with mother nature, all of those things and, and watch your life transform 
Yes. Beautifully. Well, Susanna, thank you so much for being on my podcast and, awesome. and promoting these beautiful forms of wellness. And I will have links to um, your website where people can find you to do the emotion code and okay. um, in any other links that you want me to put. Is there any final thing you want people to know about you or, or something about life? The last thing, the only thing that always resonates with me is, is always remember, I am enough. I'm mm. not enough to, of anything. I am enough. Everything I need is within me now. Love that. And that is, if anyone ever calls my phone, um, I'm so done with the answering message saying, please leave a message. Like everyone knows what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I always say, I always say, hello, beautiful person, or it's something original, but the number one is you are enough. You mm -hmm. are enough because you are sitting there breathing. Everything else is what you resonate towards. But yes, thank you for that. Susanna, you are enough. You are beautiful. Thank you, thank you. for being here and connecting with me. And I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you. The same to you.